Hello, Stuart Wellborn here, the film psycho. That name's derived from the fact that I was in private practice for 13 years as a psychotherapist and now I'm a film student. <sighs> I'm one day late uploading my vlog because yesterday I was out filming um, a project which I'll get onto in a moment. But that means that I now have to donate £10 to a charity and I'll do a screen capture video of that process that I'll stick at the end of this vlog. Uh, yes, yesterday I was out finishing off my first ever amateur production, which is Hitman Vengeance, a fan-made web series based on Agent 47. The pilot was my original um, ever production, and for the last two years we've been working on episode two, which has been a nightmare. Um, if it could go wrong, it went wrong, and so um, we had a green screen sequence um, for the news, because we wanted to put one of those studio backdrops in, uh, and as you've uh, probably worked out if you've been watching my vlogs for a while, green screen really isn't my thing just yet. Uh, so we went out with the actress, and, so, and with my mum to be fair, and reshot the news segment as if it was live, and so that's one project that is very close to being released. I'm looking at roughly the 22nd of September for episode two of Hitman Vengeance. My current project, um, The Terrible Old Man, HP Lovecraft adaptation for my master's thesis, is steaming ahead nicely. Um, my crew's coming together. I haven't heard from my actor's agent yet, so I'll be resending the email and uh, Hopefully we'll hear something this time, and hopefully something positive. Um, but on top of all that, we got uh, confirmation for my second location. Oh, I've got both the locations I wanted for this, and it's going to look awesome, because oh, the production value is just amazing. It would have cost a fortune to try and set something like that up. So that's where we are with my current project. So let's move on to a filmmaking tip. As I just said, in episode two of Hitman Vengeance, it's been a pig, a right nightmare. If it could go wrong, it could go wrong. So um, my first tip is on editing, or should I say, shooting for the edit, which was the focus of my last module in my course. Not that I needed to worry about this kind of thing anymore, but when we first shot a flashback scene for episode two, we were filming in this lovely cafe. You know, we did our nice um, master shot, then we did some over the shoulder shots, crossed the line pretty much all the time. Um, but what we didn't think about was that there was music playing in the background. <sighs> oh. oh. I've managed to salvage the sequence, but the amount of hours I've put in to um, make it watchable and pretty good, I'd say. I don't think you'll notice um, these errors. Uh, yeah, a lot of work went into that. So that's my first filmmaking tip. Beware of background noises, especially music, because you, you'll... No, no way around it. Uh, but the second tip which is also editing related, is about shooting for the edit. Making sure that you've got plenty of options for your editor. You know, don't just go, right, we've got that, I'm happy, and off we go. Maybe once you're more experienced, you can just go, right, that's the shot I want, and off we go. But at the early stages of your filmmaking career, I would advise getting as much coverage as possible. And a third tip on editing, and this is a mistake I've found in younger students, shall we say, um, because uh, I'm not saying I know more than the younger students in many areas, I've just got life experience. But um, what I've noticed a lot is that their cutting and their editing isn't justified. Um, Patrick Tucker, whose directing course I went on the other week, gave some very good tips on when to use over-the-shoulder shots and um, your two-shot. Um, and he says when you're doing two-shot, you keep the two of them 
in the frame whilst everything's cushy and sound but once there's some sort of conflict that's when you cut to the other two uh, I think that's enough filmmaking tips for this week so I shall move on to my book review which is editing related and it's by well I'd say he's the god of film editing Walter Murch in the blink of an eye second edition I've got um, I digested that and many other books as part of my last module and I think that would give you some good insights into why you edit, why you use certain frames um, really recommend that book Walter Murch in the blink of an eye so that's my book recommendation and I couldn't really think of a film that tied in with editing uh, off the top of my head because as I say I'm, I'm rushing this week's vlog and uh, so what I've picked up is the movie that is the prequel to my web series Hitman 2007 I believe that one uh, I love this film that's why I decided to uh, do my web series I really liked it I've played the games as well and I can understand why some game fans aren't overly keen but uh, compared to the new movie I think this one's brilliant Was, mm, wasn't a fan of the new one if I'm being honest um, not so much anything about the actor playing Agent 47 other than why did he have hair and then well fuck it I'm going to spoil it at the end Agent 48 or 49 comes out and he's got a shaved head why didn't they do it the other way around that would have made more sense that the newer model could grow hair Meh. lots of things that you can pick fault with in the new one great if you want an action movie but not so much an Agent 47 film in my opinion I would have had Timothy Oliphant back now in this one you might have thought he was a little bit young for playing Agent 47 but uh, you know it's nearly 10 years later now I think he should come back and reprise the role with a decent script yes so that's my filmmaking tip and that's my vlog for this week uh, I am the film psycho and I will see you in six days now Bye.